Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a specific problem uh, which is going to look at this idea of independence that we've been considering and also then going to feed in to looking at tree diagrams. So a year group of students studied three books, A, B and C. At the end of the year, they were asked to write a book report on one of these. 70 wrote about A, 50 wrote about B, and 90 wrote about C. Three students are selected at random. Find the probability that all three wrote about A, and all three wrote about a different book. OK, so, probability that all three wrote about A. So really how you need to think about this is that what we're going to do is we're going to physically pick out those students. So the probability that the first student that I pick wrote about book A would be 70 out of the total number of students that there are. So we've got 70 plus 50, 120 plus 90. So there's 210 students altogether in that year group. So it would be 70 out of 210. Okay, That's the probability of picking out the first student. Okay, Now that student's been picked. They walk over to the side. Okay, So now, from that cohort, I now have 69 that are left out of 209 students. So there are 69 left who wrote about book A out of the 209 students. Okay, So I pick out that one student and then I put them to one side. So I now have... For the third choice, 68 students out of 208 remaining. OK, so this will be the probability of picking out those three students who all have uh, wrote about book A. So we'd have 70 times 69 times 68. So that would be 3, 2, 8, 4, 4, 0 over 210 times 209 times 208. So 9129120. So that lovely looking fraction there. So that simplifies down to 391 out of 10,868. So this is equal to 0 0.035. Well, let's do 3 sig fig. So 0 0.0360 to 3 sig fig. OK? So that is the answer to the first one. Now, if all three wrote about a different book, then I pick out the first student, OK? They've written about book A. So the probability of picking out a student who's written about book A is 70 out of 210, okay, for the first choice. So they walk over to the side. Now I pick out another student and they've written about book B. Now the probability of doing that is that there are 50 students who wrote about book B out of the remaining 209 students, okay? So they then walk over to the side and then I pick out another student. They've written about book C. So there were 90 students that wrote about book C out of the remaining 208 students that I've got. OK. Now, this, as it stands, isn't the full answer. OK. Because each of these probabilities were based on the order of choice that I made. The fact that I got the A, then B, then C. That isn't the only way it could have occurred. I could have had A, then C, then B. In which case I would have had 90 over 209 here and 50 over 208, okay? which would be different. Um, well, a different series of events. okay? So I've got to take account of all of the possible ways that this can happen. Now, for this first problem, all three wrote about A, there was only one way that it could happen, okay, that I could go A, then A, then A. 
Okay, that can only happen one way. However, for this, there is the order to consider. So how you want to think about this is as a probability tree, really. So if you think about the first choice, second choice, and third choice of students, and the first book report could either be about A, B, or C. The second book report could be about A, B, or C. Okay, for each of those first choices. And then from each of those, I could have had A, B, C. Okay, so I'm not going to go through and draw all of these because I'm probably going to run out of space. Okay, so each of those situations, right, and this continues on, on down. So if you think of the ways that I could pick out three people who picked A, well, there's only one way. One, two, three. There's one route through the tree diagram. However, for A, B, C, I could have had A, B, C. I could have had A, C, B. So I've got A, B, C. I've got A, C, B. I've got B, A, C. I've got B, C, A. Or I could have had C, A, B. Or C, B, A. So there are actually six different ways of doing that. So the six different ways of going through this process. Because really, if I just reverse the 50 and the 90, I still get exactly the same probability. Okay? This probability is not going to change if I just change two of the numerators. So each of them will be the same. Each of the six routes has the same probability, but because there's six routes through, I need to multiply my answer by six. Now, how to get to that six quickly? Well, we had three choices to make initially. Then you had two choices left because you'd already picked one of them. And once you'd picked two, there was only one choice left. So you had three choices, A, B, C. Once you picked A, it could either then be B or C. And once you'd picked B, you've only got left with C. Okay? So three times two times one. So three factorial. So this is actually the three factorial. If there had been four students are selected at random, then there would have been four factorial here. Okay? I would have had four probabilities here times by four factorial. So, what is the final result? So, we've got 70 over 210 times by 50 over 209 times by 90 over 208. And I've got to multiply that by 6. So, that gets me 1125 over 5434. And that is 0.207 to 3 significant figures. Okay, so that's how we can deal with that type of problem.